it's really hard to judge the impact that will have because the banks haven't actually disclosed how much of their lending previously was uh, to non-resident buyers, uh, how much of their lending was based on utilising offshore income. So on the face of it, you would have to say it's either very well researched uh, information they base their decision on or it's a marketing ploy. And I don't think anyone knows because none of the banks have disclosed what percentage of their lending was actually to the parties that they are now saying they won't lend to. So it's difficult to say what sort of impact it will have, if any, on the marketplace. There hasn't been a reaction from the industry because uh, we deal in the sale of property for, for clients all across the country. The people I've spoken to anecdotally have not uh, seen any significant impact from this on their clients who are buying. But as I say, very early days yet, we don't have any data to actually base any sound decisions on. I'm not sure actually whether that's a really great way of trying to uh, slow a real estate market down, or if even slowing the market down is the right thing to do. But you would have to say that uh, people trying to get on the housing ladder, first home buyers, um, if, they, if a, a debt to income ratio is put on mortgage borrowing, it could make it even more difficult for first home buyers or indeed families to get on the housing ladder uh, in any of the major centres in New Zealand. So I'd like to see some real evidence that that is going to be anything but a negative for the very people that the government are trying to help, supposedly. I'm not sure that's a great idea at all. Let's deal with what we do know, and that is the market over the last six months. The market across New Zealand has been very positive. Uh, Auckland has continued on, as it has done for a number of years, with an excess of demand over supply. And there are a lot of really smart people at all levels of government and locally uh, trying to address the supply issue, more land available, more construction, remove some of the red tape, and I'd encourage them to keep doing so. The rest of New Zealand has come to light over the last uh, six to 12 months. Provincial markets had been stagnant for some years, but now we are seeing that they are also very, very active. The biggest issue we have right now is, and it's been well publicised over recent days, is that the number of listings available for sale, the number of new listings coming forward is at historically low levels. So there's a real supply demand battle going on right across New Zealand at the moment. So very good for sellers, a little bit more difficult for buyers. That's what we know has happened. Looking at the next six months, uh, predicting what's going to happen normally makes people look very foolish, but you would have to say that uh, if people are thinking of selling in the spring, waiting for the weather to be better, I'd suggest that they rethink and actually put their properties on the market now because the market is thirsty for new listings. Uh, will the market continue to be as strong as it is? There's no indication of any event on the horizon in regard to interest rate moves or uh, anything but down or indeed any change in immigration policy that would impact the market. So we see no reason why things won't keep being very positive. Yes, well I think that's something that people who will be affected by that will have, have to factor into their buying decisions. But once again, we saw a change in policy in regard to the, the Brightline test uh, you know, within the last 12 to 18 months, we saw the change in people having to have uh, New Zealand inland revenue numbers and indeed uh, bank account numbers. And while for a few months people took the opportunity to consider their decisions, very quickly people have become used to that factoring into their decision, decisions. So I think you'll find it will have limited effect, but we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? The number one issue for Auckland and the Auckland housing market is that it is a victim of the success of this city. Uh, Auckland's a wonderful city to live. It's recognised internationally now as not a large New Zealand city, but indeed it's a small, almost boutique international city. There are more people who want to live here because of lifestyle or business or employment opportunities than there are properties available for them to buy. So we have a supply demand equation that needs to be addressed. That means we have to free up more opportunity for new uh, house building. We have to intensify in the correct areas of Auckland, not everywhere, in the correct areas of Auckland so that we have more higher density living. And we also have to address the infrastructure issue, that is our public transport and indeed our roading infrastructure. And I know a lot of work's being done and it's not a simple equation or a simple solution to any of those, but that's the key. We have to make sure we have infrastructure to support a growing population. We have to make sure that the rules and regulations around the building of new property, the intensification in the correct areas around the transport corridors, that needs to be solved and it needs to be solved right now. The best time to buy a house in Auckland was 20 years ago. 
the second best time to buy a house is right now today because we are a city with a growing population. There are so many assets here, not just in Auckland, but within New Zealand. So if you do your homework, make sure you have your finances in place. And if you're buying a property for your family to live in, then it doesn't matter when you buy it because it's a long term decision. And whether the property goes up or down in value over the short term, if it's providing what your family needs, that's irrelevant. If you're buying for investment purposes, for long term, it is exactly the same. Do your research, make well thought out decisions and buy in locations that have factors that would suggest that they'll be more popular in the future and just put the property in your portfolio and over time it will increase. Yes, there'll be times when the market won't be quite as good, but if you've structured your debt to equity ratio correctly, then that won't impact you. If you're a speculator who is looking to buy and sell in short time frames, if you do well and make money, you should celebrate. Uh, if you make a mistake or the market changes and you lose money, you should not complain to anyone else because speculating in property is a gamble and with gambles, you have to be prepared to lose. First home buyers have a real challenge and that challenge has been around ever since homes have been available to purchase. Uh, it's not that many years ago that first home buyers faced the challenge uh, of interest rates 12, 14%. They also faced challenges with the structure of loans, which saw them, uh, first of all, having to have a deposit, then getting a bank to improve their loan, and indeed, in some cases, second mortgages or loans from parents. Today, the challenges are different, but they are the same. You can borrow a lot uh, more money for a far lower interest rate, but house prices are higher. Deposits, because of the cost of living, are just as hard to save. So first home buyers have a challenge. They have to work really hard. They have to have a goal and a commitment to being a homeowner. Then they have to work really hard to build a deposit. Once they have that deposit in place, they have to be flexible about the type of property and the location in which they purchase. Very hard to purchase in the middle of Remuera for your first home on a minimum deposit, but there are other locations around Auckland and indeed in every location in New Zealand where properties are more affordable. So I'd say this to them, work really hard, have a goal, make the compromises needed if you can to put your deposit together and then find a property you can afford and get on the ladder. I think with first home buyers, rather than focusing on, on an area that's better for them, I think if you're living in any major centre, you have to find somewhere, if you can, either close to where you work or indeed with a good commuting structure for you to get there. You also want to be somewhere where you can be in touch with your friends and your family. So do the very best you can to buy in a location that will work for you lifestyle-wise. Now that'll be dictated in some cases by the amount of money you can afford to pay for a property. So do your homework in whichever location in New Zealand that you can and find a property you can afford so that your finances are structured to get you on the ladder.